Hello, this is Steve from Beedos Leatherworks, and today's projects are these two pair of shell cordovan Aldens. Now these these are not bad shoes. They they they've seen better days. They've been very well used. This particular one is a full leather sole and heel. We're going to replace the entire welt. There's some tears, stitches coming loose wherever it is needed. The uppers are kind of cut right there. We're going to do the graffiti JR soles on this one. This is a $410 job. This particular one is very similar. We already removed the sole. Notice that the welt was just not, there's just nothing there to, to salvage. We're going to do the full leather soles and heels again, clean the uppers, stitch where needed. This one's a $380 job. These Alden shoes are made out of shell cordovan leather. Very durable material. Now even though they are they look pretty beaten up, but um, once we bring them back, you're going to see the transformation that they're going to be beautiful shoes again. Alright, let's get started. Alrighty, alrighty. Cut this one apart already. And there's nothing on the bottom we're going to salvage. Okay. We're going to do new heel blocks. Hmm. These aren't even the original heel blocks. They've been replaced. I usually replace, you know, take the sole off first, then get to the welt. Just a waste of time. We're not going to salvage the welt. You got to be careful. You don't do any damage, though. After all, you don't want to. You don't want to create more work for yourself. I mean, if happens, we're going to fix it, of course, but... Wow. This thing has been repaired too many times. Wrong way. Look at this, I'm not even cutting it. The world is not even holding onto the shoe. Wow. I mean, they didn't even secure the welt when they put the sole on, it looks like. How can somebody do that? How can somebody put a sole on a shoe when the, the basic structure is not even holding it? onto the shoe like it's supposed to be. Wow. Oh, the things I see in this business sometimes just kind of I shake my head at it. We're going to save this. This is called the heel rand. We're just going to save it for a pattern. We're not going to reuse it because this is made out of paper, fiberboard, cardboard, whatever you want to call it. A lot of companies use uh, that type of material for, for, for these types of uh, things. It's not, it's not that uncommon, I hate to say. Oh, 
we'll replace that insole. Sometimes what people do is that they'll cut the sole off, right? And then they'll leave those nails inside. Well, when you leave them in there and then you add more nails to it, then you got a bunch of nails inside the shoe. Well, it's not the right way to do it. These nails are basically securing the heel block on, right? When it's like this, it gets nailed from the inside and it secures all that together. Because um, this is a 270 degree welt, which means that the welt stops right here, doesn't go all the way around. So you got to have something from inside to secure the, the, all the heel block the soles to. The problem is that you've got to replace, you've got to remove, you've got to remove the old no nails, noils. You've got to remove the old noils. Now I sound like an Australian. Noils. Uh, anyway, you have to remove the old nails so you can put new nails in there. But sometimes, again, shortcuts are taken and uh, and it's not the right way to do it. Sorry. Sorry. Well, this is kind of cool right here. Let's see if I can remove this. Basically, you've got a piece of canvas. Okay. That's the footbed. This is the gimming. This is basically glued on to the footbed. And then the uppers come together along with a piece of welt. I can find a welt here. Obviously that's not the new one. And it all gets stitched together like that. Okay. Now over time this gimming tends to come loose like This is a bit of a drastic explanation, but you get the idea. This is the footbed, right? And this is the gimming right here. So what happens is that sometimes over time, you know, over years of years of use, that comes apart. And when that comes apart, sometimes the uppers change the size. So what this canvas is doing is basically bridging these two together. So if it ever wants to come loose, this is going to hold it in place. So you don't lose the shape of the shoe. It's kind of cool design. I like that. Now I don't know. I don't know who else does that, but I knew. I know Alan Edmonds used to do it, but I don't think they do anymore. And some of their older ones, maybe, you would come across that, but not the newer shoes. Now they do have. I've seen Alan Edmonds use this type of style right along the arch area there, but not throughout the whole footbed there. Alright, so it's a part. At this stage we're going to clean up some of the old thread. That's the welt thread. And then we're going to work on the uppers a little bit and see if we can take care of these creases. Let's continue. Now, see how you've got... These are called rolls, okay? They're not really creases, they're rolls because shell cordovan doesn't crease. You see those wrinkles? You'll never have that with shell cordovan. That's why they call those rolls. We're going to try to unroll those rolls. This is basically a mixture of uh, water and rubbing alcohol. Okay. So if we're looking at the shoe, you've got horizontal lines, right? We're going to, we're going to kind of roll it vertically, like the opposite direction of of the rolls. A little massagey, little massagey for the shoe. All right, look at that, looky, looky that now. See all that stuff? It's just the build up on the surface. 
that we will get to. That's just this is just kind of softening those rolls <coughs> and relaxing the, the shell. Now they do some people do deer bone, okay. But you've got to work at this one. This is this was in pretty bad shape. Well it was used shape I should say. It wasn't really bad, bad, but <coughs> I have I have a bone also. <laughs> I have a bone. No, not a not you know what I mean. Stop it. This is a family family show. Kids could be watching. Now the bone, this is not a deer bone, right? <coughs> deer bone. Um, they they say deer bone, but this is this is a cow bone. Okay, I'm sorry, a lamb. This is a, a lamb. And the local butcher, you can go and, and get any bone you want, but the idea is that it can't be dry, right? It's got to have oils in it. So when you're when you're rubbing against the the shell, you don't do more damage than than you're you're trying to help. <clears throat> okay. So I I don't really use this this much that much. If it's a if it's um, what should we call it? Like uh, not too bad of a rolls, I'll use it. But in this case, this is this is pretty drastic. So sometime I'll use this. But as you can see, I mean, you just have to work at it. Of course, one of my employees decided to give this to Zeus. He thought it was just a bone. I'm like, where's my bone? He's like, I give it to Zeus. I'm like, that was my bone. You can't give it to the dog. That's not a dog bone, for Christ's sake. Anyway, I caught him just in time. He did bite it. There's a little crack right there. But, you know, I make sure that I don't have that crack on the leather so I don't, I don't scratch the surface. But I got a nice smooth surface on this side. I can't believe he gave it to the... I guess he was doing the dog a favor. But, my God, leave my bone alone. My bone. It's like my hammer. Man, I can hear the comments now about this conversation. <laughs> so as you can see, you know, it's already kind of taking shape, right? Now it's 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 far from being dry because we still have to color it, condition it, polish it, buff it, and repeat, repeat until we get a nice, nice surface on it. So all right, let's continue. Well, the second pair is in. Pretty bad shape. Worse shape than the first one. I mean, nothing we can't, nothing we can't undo. But it's in, it's in, man, it is in pretty sad, sad shape. Well, especially on. On the other shoe, got a little torn spot on the side. Now it becomes a little bit more difficult to do a repair because the uppers are damaged. So I got to figure a way. I gotta figure something out. I don't know what. I just, just kind of, I've got to think about it. I mean, this is just, this is just. Remember earlier I was telling you guys how the gemming comes loose? Well, here's a perfect example of it. Well, that's not a big deal, right? This is the worst deal. As I was taking it apart, right at the crease line, it just split. Now this is part of the uppers, so we're going to have to figure. We're going to have to figure something out, you know, because there's no lining. This is an unlined loafer, basically. Yeah, it's in pretty bad shape. 
I'll have to do some thinking on this one. Sometimes you get surprises, you know, that happens. But you hope those surprises aren't to a point where you can't bring the shoe back. You know what I mean? Obviously, these are these are very old. I mean, these are... I don't know how old they are, but they're pretty old. And, you know, the guy, the order of the guy... Well, I'm trying to think what I'm what I'm going to do and talk at the same time, and it's not working. The reason the customer wanted to repair it is because it's his favorite shoes. Now, can he buy a new pair? New pair is probably going to be about eight hundred. This is half the cost of a new one. But unfortunately, you know, I've got to make a decision where. If I know that, is this going to come back to to its former glory? Structurally, not visually. Visually, I can bring this back. You know, all these scratches you're seeing that. Lightly sand that and dye it. Stitch everything that needs to get stitched. But it's the structural that I'm that I'm concerned about, right? So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to put this one aside and. Um, finish that first pair and figure something out. Alright, let's continue. Alright, so we kind of uh, left the other project over there because we're going to have to do a lot of uh, thinking before we continue the other one. So meanwhile, let's uh, let's work on this one. Now, when I have the shoe apart at this stage, I'd like to take care of the uppers as much as I can, okay? Because basically, when the welt is on there, you can't get into the nooks and crannies of the, of the edge of the sole where it meets the welt. Now, if you're, if you're not removing the welt, then it's okay. Just you clean it as much as possible. Now, this is a dirty rag, I know. But there's... There's a lot of surfaces that, that I can use to still clean the shoe up. Now, the reason I like this rag is because it's got a lot of little bit of rough surface that tends to um, scrub it down and clean it up. Now, at times, now, I've never really done it on, on the shell cordovans with the steel wool. I've done it on, on calfskin where it's got a lot of buildup on there. Basically, you get steel wool and acetone, and then um, you scrub it down. The steel wool really loosens the surface of, of the leather. Now, we've got a little bit of crack going on right here. Let's see if I can show you guys. See that right there? Now what I'm going to try to do, see if I can peel this up, slide something underneath it to reinforce that area. I'm going to try. Or I can just kind of glue it back together. Either way, do something to it. As you can see, the leather is very dry. Okay. We're going to add some color and condition, 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 condition. Moisturize that surface as much as we can to kind of bring that surface to hydrated, hydrated levels. Does that make sense? Hydrated? You understand. Sometimes I talk too much. All right. Let's continue. Now I want to show you guys something. After all that cleaning, you see this still leftover waxes? You got to be careful. I don't recommend using glass on everything. You don't want to scratch the surface. It's a sharp edge. 
and you can kind of glide over that surface and just catch the top wax buildup. Obviously you don't want to do this on every situation. These are very old. These have a lot of lot of buildup on here. After cleaning, you can do you can run a heat gun on it or a hair dryer. If the surface starts shining, that means there's still wax there's still wax on there. And believe it or not, that's not scratching the surface. Okay? Like scratches like this, we're going to do, we're going to take 1500 grit paper, basically sand that down. Sand it down until it's smooth. Okay. You can you can do you can do a pretty good job with this with the sandpaper. You just have to kind of be careful. Again, it's fifteen hundred grit. You're not gonna do too much damage, but you need to be careful with what you're doing. I mean it's always it's always a good idea if you haven't practiced before, you know, just just get a piece of get a piece of material or something. A piece of old leather. In practice. I know the shoes look like shoes don't look too great, but they'll look better once they get done. I promise you. Alright, let's continue. Alright. Add a little bit of color now. Now, they are uh, color 8, Horween Shell Cordovan Leather. Okay? Man, I'm running out of red. Which is like a, like a burgundy tone almost, you know? Now, I've got some colors that I've mixed, red and black, to get that dark burgundy hue. But, this one, we don't want to darken the shoe up. You know, as you can see... It does have some lighter spots, but we're trying to even that tone up as best as possible. It's not going to be exact, even when the shell cordova is brand new. It's just not. It's just not. E there's there's different colors, different variations of the leather when you're looking at from different angles. So, at least doing this red, it's going to keep it in the lighter shade and not darken it up too much. A lot of people are, are afraid of Shell Cordovan. You got to be careful with the with the, some colors, like the lighter colors. This kind of is evening the evening the tone down a little bit. Oh, I decided to just to glue that spot, not to not to open that up. I think it'll be okay. There's not really a stress area on that on that spot. Now, don't forget all this all this stuff that I'm doing that I usually do. The customer really doesn't request it. I suggest that I'm going to do it. You know, so there's no surprises later. But, you know, taking care of the little cut, cleaning the upper, sanding the upper, bringing the, bringing the color back as much as possible. You know, it's, all that is not, is not part of the job. Especially like this one, right? This was, this was a full restore with full welt replacement and, you know. But when it's calf skin... Yes, I take care of the uppers, but when it's shell cordovan like this bad, this old I should say, it's very, it's different process than 
just shining and polishing them up you know it's it's not it. it it's as you can see there's a lot of there's a lot of steps that you got to go through and this is not even half done yet to try to bring back the uppers as best as you can so I do that because it's the right thing to do that's that's what it's supposed to get done that's how it's supposed to get done so so we're going to let this completely dry we're going to buff it we're going to um, condition it and then we're going to start working on the welt all right let's continue all right so at this stage we are going to stitch the welt on to the shoe now as you can see it's come you know it's not looking bad at all you guys remember what it looked like before right and I'm, I'm still not done with it yet it's coming back pretty good so we've got this new piece of material inside there you guys remember that I removed it earlier this piece here no, we're not going to replace you know we're not going to put that back obviously okay so that's a new new canvas right there now I'm not going to show you guys me re, you know stitching the whole thing but Basically, I got a ball of beeswax right there. Just poke the needle in there, wet that little piece of leather, and make sure that I go in the same holes as the original holes as what was there before. Poke the needle through. Put the thread on that little end of the hook. I've got a piece of leather right here that basically is, you know, I pull the I pull the string with and then I wrap the other end around the handle nice and tight you keep going until you're completely done the beeswax just keeps gives it a little bit of a better friction goes in easier and comes out easier so that's all it's that that's all it's for as you can see We've got a little bit of stitching to do, which is going all the way around the shoe. All right, let's continue. All right, I'll show you guys me stitching a little bit. Just remember last time I didn't show you guys because it was just going to take too long. People are like, well, let us make the decision if it's too long or not. We'd like to see it. All right, I'll show you guys. Man, did I did I sound like what was that drunk guy's name in in The Simpsons? I think I just sounded like him. <laughs> Maybe I can do some voiceovers. Right. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to mention to you guys, the last video I uploaded was the Alden Indie Boot with the bling, you know, the brass eyelets and all that stuff. Now look, my voice wasn't gone. I just didn't feel like talking, okay? <laughs> Suckers, I got you guys. No, no, but seriously, I was sitting there contemplating whether I should make a video or not you know and um, and I'm like man I just don't have the time right now to, to edit and add on and take out you know so I said you know what I'm just gonna not talk it wasn't like set up as like an AS is that what is that ASMR video not at all it was not my intention at all you know I was just gonna do a short video and just show you guys like before and after and during stuff and I'm like man I just don't feel like talking so I said you know what let me come up with a excuse so people will think that I lost my voice <laughs> I didn't lose my voice I got my voice well it's a little bit hoarse but I got it there was no doctor's note I, I, I was lying to you guys I'm sorry I'm sorry man I'm sorry well, not really. It was funny, I thought. No? Uh, so people were saying, like, get well soon, and and this and that, and thought I was sick, and I really appreciate it, guys, but I'm not. I'm okay. 
I'm okay. My voice is back. Now, all right, getting back to the job. Around the toes here, right? Now, this isn't for your, this isn't for most viewers. This is, these comments are like towards my colleagues who are in this, in this similar business. Now, when they, when they, some, when some people re-welt shoes, they pull this welt really tight like that, right? They stitch it on there. So, what happens is when you, when you want to flip this over, it puts a lot of stress on that toe area and also on the inside because it's going, it's, it, has, it has no place to go but to push it inside. Okay. So try to do it. Give it a little bit. Don't pull it so tight. Leave, it, leave the welt loose a little bit so it kind of has a, a chance to kind of sit flat like that. Okay. Because you don't want to put more stress onto the shoe you know, whether you already have that stress on there. So just kind of don't don't pull the don't pull the welt too tight around the toe area. So it can so you can easily kind of flip it up like that without any without any stress in that area. Hey, get out of there. I mean you see it's already it's not too bad. But really people like it's like vertical like this man. It's like Gotta be careful when you're doing that. That's not that's not to the that's not to the you know normal viewer who who's never welted a shoe before. That's just to my colleagues sometimes. Let me see if I can position this a little better so you guys can see it. Okay. So I can stitch it at the same time. So that's the that's the behind uh, story behind that Alden video. Okay, I'm okay. I'm not sick. I mean, I'm sick in the head sometimes, but but that's okay. Most people are. Yeah, you too. Yeah, it was you. I'm coming to you. <laughs> I can, I can hear the comments now. How dare you call me crazy? I'm not crazy. We're all crazy at some point or another. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Perfect. It's getting there. Someone, someone wanted me to video me setting up a hookah. <clears throat> well. Maybe I'll do that. Not right now. But I'll put it on my list to do things. Come on now. These needles are are pretty dangerous, right? Now there is um, there is other methods of of sewing welts on shoes. Okay. <clears throat> this is an awl, A W L. Now, unfortunately, it was an antique piece of wood and it broke on me. It can be fixed, I just just don't have the time right now to fix it. Okay, so basically it's just a little little piece of sharp metal that goes in and it makes the hole through the welt through the shoe coming out right there just like the needles doing and once you've got the hole in there you have two needles attached at the end of the threads you put it in and you pull it tight it's just another way of doing it you know some people I guess that's called a saddle stitch some people do that way and I've done that way too this one, I choose to do it this way. I was going to put some music on in the background. Oh no, oh no. Man, some of you guys are just losing it when I have music in the background, like light, smooth jazz or something like 
like anything, like to keep me keep me occupied when I'm working. No, no. How dare you play music in the background? I'm gonna unsubscribe. Give you a thumbs down. I don't know what it is with me. I mean, you know what? I have made videos like early, like in the early uh, <clears throat> of my recordings. I thought it was like good idea to do that, and I did that like, like epic battle scenes, like dun, 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 you know. And I guess um, it's not really advisable to do that. I wasn't narrating the jobs at all. I was just kind of going through pictures and and um, some some work and stuff. So apparently, people don't really like that. I don't know why. Now I wouldn't really put it that loud and. And you know, in your face, music like that again, but but like in the background, wouldn't that would that bother you guys if it was a light music in the background? I mean, of course, I would figure something out as far as you know, if it's not copyrighted. One of the apps will have some something in there to be able to reuse it without any licensing agreement. You know, I guess when you get when you download the app, you're agreeing to their. So anyway, so I guess no music. I'll just continue talking. You guys think it's easy to talk for like over and over and over again by yourself when nobody's in the room? <laughs> I told you I'm a little bit crazy. Always reminds me of my wife's comment. She's watching me work one day, which is rare that she's at the shop. She's like, who are you talking to? Actually, no, she wasn't at the shop. She was just watching one of my videos. Well, that's a rarity, too. She's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, my viewers. She's like, what? She's like, my view. I'm like, my viewers. And she just shakes her head and walks out of the room. <laughs> funny that um, years ago she started the social media before I did right I mean I had I really didn't I wasn't really interested in that I and mean, we've had like Facebook closed groups like for shoe repair guys and leather leather smiths and stuff like that you know I belong to groups like that but like Instagram YouTube I was never I was never like into it at all. Not that I'm like really, really into it now. Well, maybe I am a little bit. And um, one time, one of my friends, she's in New York. She's like, "How come you're not posting on Instagram?" I'm like, "What's that?" And I'm like, "Man, I don't have time to do that kind of stuff." She's like, "You're doing that now in these groups. You should do that, you know, to see if you can generate some business." I'm like. Hmm, interesting. So, I started Instagram. Now I've got almost ten thousand followers, and and they're they're kind of they're not like, what's the word that they use? Like I didn't buy them, you know. They're generic. That's the word, generic. I guess that's pretty cool. <clears throat> I get more like questions on Instagram than than business if that makes sense like people asking hey Steve I saw you do this how do you do this how do you do that you know and um, which is cool I don't really care I, I answer I answer the questions maybe I may miss one or two but the feeds go they, they move so fast that sometimes if I miss something you know I'll find out down the road that I didn't answer it but I'll try my best but lately YouTube has been wonderful for me also, the other groups that I belong to, that shoe groups and stuff like that, you know, I'm always there. I'm an I'm an admin in a couple of them, and um, and I'm I'm always there to answer questions. I get a lot of questions coming from from Facebook Messenger or my business mess my business page Messenger, and um, a lot about quotes like. What would it cost to do this? What would it cost to do that? 
and, I'll, I'll, and I'm happy to give the quotes as best as I can, but sometimes you can't be 100% right because you've got to see the item physically inspect it, like especially with handbags, right? Like with shoes, you know, you can kind of get a good idea, soles and heels and stuff like that, you know, but, but with bags, there's always like surprises, you know? And unfortunately, it's not... You try to be as, as you try to do the best you can for for the estimates, but you're not going to be able to give it 100% until until the bag is in your hands and you're inspecting it, and and then you give the estimate to the customer. But yeah, YouTube has been great. I mean, wow, it's gener generated a lot of work. And you know, it's it's funny that the customers that come in from YouTube are really the work that it's not your like normal you know shoe shine or or like heels or something like that it's big jobs you know what I mean sometimes that people don't know they've they've taken it to other places and they don't, they don't you know person couldn't do it just stuff like that but to me the more detail the better I like it because it shows in the end that you know the customer is knows the difference between what I'm doing and what everybody else does I guess I'm doing okay all right I think I talked enough besides I'm almost done here anyway well thanks for keeping me company all right let's continue all right so we've got the welt finished, okay. The cork in. Now, the old shank was not in bad shape, but you know I wanted to replace it since I have the same. Might as well replace it, okay. So once this goes on. This fabric right here will go on top. Of course, I forgot to put glue on it. Or did I? Yeah, there's no glue on it. Oops. It's okay. We'll wash the glue dry. Well, not really. Now the idea with this fabric is that because the leather is going to be, ooh, the sucker's hot. Woo! When the leather comes on top of the metal, if things come loose and and they rub against each other like this, it's going to start squeaking. So this is why. Now the original had the cover on it also. Again, not most most manufacturers don't do that. And this is the new heel rand that we were talking about earlier. Remember that they were going to make a new one. Just a piece of uh, three and a half ounce soling leather. Now, over time. Of being repaired this is the original one over time of being repaired this gets sanded down and it gets narrower and narrower right so if you see here okay you see the outline that I drew this is basically the outline of of the old one okay now this is much bigger than what he had before which needs to be bigger because that's how it was originally. Now is it going to be that big? No. What I'll do is I'll trim that once I put the sole on there. So. And usually the transition from the welt to the rand should be seamless. Like that. Okay. 
like that. That way when the sole comes on, you can't really tell where the welt ends, where the ran begins. So as you can see it's getting there. It's getting there shortly, slowly but surely. Alright, let's continue. Y'all know what time it is. Such a silly man. I'm a silly, silly man. Well, I decided to put my uh, Beto's stamp on the shoe. Beautiful man. Man, this is looking good. Hmm. It's there. I hope the customer's happy. Let's continue. <laughs> I love that ornament. It's so cool. There's nothing. She's looking good. I'm gonna work on these creases a little bit more. I don't know why one side's got more creases than the other. I did the same thing. Well, this has got the shoe tree in it, but you get the idea. Anyway, let's continue. All right, this is my beast. Well, one of them anyway. This is the Landis L. This was built in 1964. It is 55 years old. Now, I'm quick with math because I was born in 66. Puts me at 53. Two years older, 55. <laughs> but you didn't think I was good at math, huh? Alright, so basically, it's a very finicky machine, right? There's a lot of moving parts. I mean, a lot of moving parts. I'm going to pull this thread out so I can run it without it. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Let me see if I can get a zoom in a little bit so you guys can see better. And every little bit needs to move. It's 
So basically what it does is there's a there's an awl. Awl is a is a basically like a blade, right? Let's see if I have one to show you. This is also called a curved needle. This is the blade, okay? Let's see if you're in the video there. Right there. Let me back it up so I can make sure that I'm in the shot. So basically there's this is a very sharp blade. It goes up through the shoe, the welt, okay? And then the needle follows that. It's a curved needle. Let's see if I can find you a needle. Where are my needles? There's a broken needle for you. So this is the needle, right? Imagine a circle. Okay? This goes up like this, and then the needle follows in the same exact hole that picks up the thread and pulls it through the hole and loops it and goes back down. I don't know how many times it does that in a minute, but it's pretty quick. We'll get to see in a minute when I stitch it on there for you. So there's two pedals. One pedal is to raise, the, raise this foot right here, the right pedal, so you can insert the shoe inside. And the other pedal is basically moves it forward and stitches it. Now this is kind of tricky, right? Because it's got top and bottom thread. But when we stitch the shoe, we stitch it upside down, just like this. Okay? So, in actuality, the bottom thread is the top thread that's on the welt. And then the, the, bottom, the top thread that we call is on the bottom of the soles. Does that make sense? You guys follow me? Oh, you'll be all right. Just watch the video. All right. Now, we got blue on the top thread and black on the bottom. So let's get started. snagged a little bit right here. Why? Because it caught the upper. You see that pad, that baroguing there? So it caught it a little bit. So if you're really looking at the thread size right here, let's see if I can show you, right here is a little bit smaller because it got, it got caught, bleh, if I can speak, it got caught up on that right there. But it'll be okay. It's not too bad. It's not the end of the world. And this is what we call an outsole machine, okay? 55 years old and it's still stitching like a champ. Of course we have a new welt on there, that's why it looks nice and clean. But even with the old welt, we try to go into the same holes and make it look right. Alright, let's continue. This is a, this is called a fudge wheel. It puts patterns on the welt. 
I don't know why they call it fudge wheel. They just do. Gives it a finishing touch. It's looking good. It's getting there. It's not done yet. Let's continue. Hey, come on now. There's always got to be one stubborn nail that doesn't want to go in. It just bends and screws up the whole pattern. Mm -mm, not on my watch. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's continue. Alright, welcome back, and we're done with another project. They turn out pretty good. You guys remember what the uppers looked like? Look at them now. Doesn't even look like the same shoe, is it? Does it? Can't even speak anymore, I'm so tired. Now, you gotta be careful with shell quarter, right? Not, not, um,. It's not a very easy uh, material to work with, especially when it's in this condition. Well, when it was in that condition, when it was beaten up, um, you know, scratched, uh, lost the color. Um, so you just have to kind of be careful with what you're doing. You, you don't want to change it drastically, unless you're trying to change the color, of course. That's a different situation. Um, I think that um, once the Phoebe's dye kind of gave it a base coat, and then the conditioners and the creams on top of it really brought the luster out. And I think it turned out pretty good. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. I think the customer is going to be excited too. Now, if you take care of the uppers, this will last you 
I don't know, a good 10 years, I would say. You just have to maintain the uppers, clean them, condition them once in a while, moisturize them. That's the most important thing. You have to moisturize the leather. Okay. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Once again, you know, it's a, it's a long video, but um, I try to cut it down as much as I could, but this is the best, shortest I can do. Now, I've got a couple of guys, a um, couple of friends of mine, who are breaking into the YouTube um, videos. Um, one is, uh, name is Jimmy Belshaw. Um, he's called the Tattooed Cobbler. Well, yeah, there's a reason why he's called that, because he's got tattoos everywhere. Nice guy. Um, he lives in um, British Columbia, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and um, he's, uh, his shop is called Roy's Shoe Repair. But if you go on YouTube, look for his, uh, look for his channel, The Tattooed Cobbler, and give him a thumbs up and, you know, uh, maybe subscribe just to kind of help him out a little bit. That would be great. Also, there's, um, there's a guy named Alan um, Trusco, if I'm not mistaken. Trus, Trushkov, T-R-U-S-H-K-O-V, if I'm not mistaken. Alan, if I butchered your name, I'm sorry, man. You've done that to my name, too, okay? Anyway, he's in Colorado, okay? And um, his uh, shop's uh, name, I believe it's called... Um, Cobblers Plus, okay? He's also trying to get some uh, subscribers on YouTube. I think he's up to maybe a thousand now. So he's, he's doing okay. So see if you can find his channel too and give him some love. Give him a thumbs up and subscribe. And um, also if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel too and gives me, give me, I can't even talk anymore. Give me a thumbs up and um, we'll see you guys on the next project. Alright, take care. Thank you.